Did you talk to the what, president? What was I doing there if, um, um, if he didn't want me to be there? Well, let me ask you, did you talk to the president? Did you interview him for this book? I, 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 abso I absolutely spoke to the president, whether he realized it was an interview or not. Um, I, I don't know, but it certainly was not off the record. Now, I've spent about uh, three hours with the president over the course of the campaign in, in the White House. So my window into Donald Trump is, um, um, is pretty significant. But even more to the point, I spent this, I spent, and this was really sort of the point of the book, I spoke to people who spoke to the president on a daily, sometimes minute-by-minute -minute basis. Donald Trump will attack. He will send lawyers letters. This is a a a 35 year history of how he approaches everything. Do you have recordings of some of these interviews and some of these conversations? Well, I, I, I work like every journalist works. So I have recordings. I have notes. Um, I am certainly in absolutely in every way comfortable with everything I've reported in this book. Would you release any of those recordings since your credibility is being questioned? I, my, my credibility is being questioned by a man who has less credibility than perhaps anyone who has ever walked on earth at this point. <laughs> That was Michael Wolf talking this morning on the Today Show, and he's going to be joining us on set on Monday morning. But we're back with Mike Barnacle, Casey Hunt, the AP's Jonathan Lampier, Republican strategist Susan Del Percio, and joining the conversation, we have national political correspondent for NBC News and MSNBC, Steve Kornacki, also White House bureau chief at the Washington Post, and political analyst for MSNBC and NBC News, Philip Rucker, and in Los Angeles, strategist at Eldridge Industries and part owner of the Hollywood reporter Janice Min. Janice was one of six guests that attended the Steve Bannon Roger Ailes dinner party that was detailed in Michael Wolf's book. Janice, let's begin with you. I love uh, the correspondence that you said you had back and forth with Michael Wolf when right. Michael was roaming around the West Wing and you were asking him, what exactly do they think you are doing there, Michael? And to which he responded what? He said, I don't know what they think I'm doing, uh, and different answers at different times would be, but I'm going to keep doing it until they tell me not to. Uh, and I remember there was a, a key moment when Kelly was brought in as chief of staff, and I said, you know, who's supposed to bring law and order to the West Wing? And I said to Michael, so, you know, is the jig up now that Kelly's there? And Michael responded to me, there is so much chaos. I think I am last on the totem pole of the concerns. And he did proceed to be in there for many, many, many more weeks, even with Kelly in the White House. Well, tell us about the dinner uh, that's detailed mm -hmm. in the book. Uh, yes. First of all, is it accurate? And uh, what were the surprises? Uh, what surprised <laughs> you in the it dinner? Was the whole, everything was surprising. The, uh, the details in the book are accurate. Uh, it was the whole, the whole dinner from start to finish was about five hours. Uh, Roger Ailes and his wife Elizabeth arrived first. Um, and remember, this is shortly, this is on the heels of Ailes being ousted from Fox News. Uh, he, hasn't, he hadn't spoken to any media, was not allowed to speak to any media and the two of them were thick as thieves on everything Elizabeth and Roger they she was his staunch defender angrier about the way he was treated than he was and really if you were to just by their accounts they simply were baffled could not believe any of these allegations coming forward believe there was self there were there was people were personally motivated uh, to get ahead in their careers uh, Rod, that Roger was a great champion of women um, and, and and they they believed it so much that you could see how they could convince others that it wasn't true um, the he also was very candid about his feelings about Rupert Murdoch uh, and and I thought tellingly at dinner I, I sat Roger sat to my right and we were talking about about Donald Trump and he said Roger said you know I'm a lifelong Republican but these guys kind of scare me and this yeah. is um, you know so you I've many days I've thought since that that conversation what would the nature of Fox News be today if Ailes had been kept in charge would it be would it be the you know the house news channel for the White House I don't know 
Yeah, there, there's so many questions to ask. One, one that Michael Wolf uh, asked yesterday on Twitter, Gabe Sherman. Gabe Sherman had yes. brought up that Rupert Murdoch had such a hostile relationship with Michael Wolf. You had everybody in the West Wing who had no idea how, who Michael Wolf was, which is just mind blowing for people it, that are running the country don't don't know who Michael Wolf was. All they had to do, and Jared Kushner and Donald Trump and I people. Know. The West Wing were in daily contact with Rupert Murdoch. If they just asked Murdoch about Michael Wolf, he would have said, "Get him the hell out of there now." Right. Well, the lack of the, it reveals the lack of discipline that Michael writes about throughout the book. Uh, let's let's go back to how he even got the access, uh, got access to the White House in the first place. Uh, in, in June of 2016. Um, Michael had done a cover story of The Hollywood Reporter on Donald Trump, and Trump was Trump had invited Michael to his house in Beverly Hills. Uh, and the, the story was not flattering. Um, it, this was a story where Michael was questioning Trump about Brexit, and he was quite confused, didn't know what Brexit was, didn't seem to know who Peter Thiel was, when, when, who was about to speak at the Republican National Convention on his behalf. When Michael brought up Peter Thiel, he said he looked confused and said, oh, is that a friend of Jared's? Um, and and so on and so on and you know even even calling the furniture in Trump's home that of a four star hotel not a five star hotel the kinds of thing that would the kinds of notes that would typically drive Trump insane but after that the cover was sort of cool looking and and uh, Michael got an email from Hope Hicks saying great cover exclamation point and <laughs> sure, you know sh <laughs> so shortly after that shortly after that Michael went in for the kill this is Michael you know he is he is a shark he went in for the kill and asked yeah. for access to the White House, and he got it. And you know, from the second after the inauguration, and he was in there. But you know, going back to the dinner party, I, I was blown away by the level of trust and confidence Steve Bannon and Roger Ailes had in Michael. He was he was clearly one of them. I mean, they 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 liked him, yeah. they trusted him, and they spoke openly. I mean, the sort of repartee at the dinner party. Michael and I were blown. Afterwards, we were almost we were incredulous, saying we just watched the formation of the cabinet, um, the Republican agenda laid out, and we really got to see who was in charge of these decisions. And there was no disputing that Bannon was the one driving driving the car at that point. He, yeah. you know, when he sat when he sat down, I, you know, among the first things he said. He said, you know, I'm, day one, we're moving the embassy to Jerusalem, which it did not, it was not day one, but that was important to him. Yeah. Um, he talked about, uh, he talked about Rudy Giuliani, uh, what they were going to, you know, what are we going to do about Rudy? He's upset he didn't get secretary of state. And Ailes, they have this, you know, really casual way about them. They know each other well. And Ailes says, uh, you know, uh, don't worry about Rudy. Just let him be photographed coming once or twice out of Air Force One. He'll be fine. He'll be fine. And then, you know, Ailes is asking Bannon, what about Georgette? What are you going to do with Georgette? And he's talking about Georgette Mossbacher, um, New York right. City socialite, big figure in the party. And Bannon said, and I don't know if this even ever happened, Bannon said, oh, we're giving her Slovenia as an ambassadorship. And they sort of, they talked about other people who were seeking ambassadorships. Um, and yeah. and then, and then the, you know, the, the, the only time I saw, you know, Bannon, we, th we picture him as this foaming mouth, rabid dog. He was incredibly calm and rational. The only two times I saw him get very heated and animated at the meal was when he said, uh, he said, um, you know what, we have our chance to get three, three, uh, three of our people on the Supreme Court. And when we do that, and I think he used an expletive, you know, the, the other side is going right. to effing say we won. And, um, and so he, yeah. he, he was very, he was very adamant about that. The second time I saw him get very animated, he said, um, forget about the Middle East. Why are people like the conflict's not in the Middle East. Everyone needs to be looking at China. And he went on this unbelievably manic long tirade about, uh, how, how, uh, China is the problem. China has stolen America's middle class. I'm getting it back. And he said, uh, you know, the, the, the South China Sea is where the action's going to be. And he said, and he create, you know, he's, he's knows an enormous right. amount about arcane Chinese history. And he mentioned some theory, right. which I was not aware of, about conflict happening every 17 years, war happening every, every 17 years in Asia, where the lesser, where the greater power destroys the lesser power, but to the detriment right. of the greater power. Okay. All right, Janice, man, thank you so much for being with us. Rem a remarkable recounting of what sounds like an absolutely remarkable dinner. Yes, and it was. what a story. Thank you so much for being with us.
Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.